In this video, I'm going to derive the equations for two structures used for flow measurement, the sharp crested rectangular weir and the V-notch weir. River flows are very variable in time and can change through two or three orders of magnitude. It's important to be able to measure high flows, for example for flood warning and estimation, and low flows for water resources, drought and ecological applications. Measuring flow is complicated because the velocity is variable across a river cross section and what we are interested in generally is an integrated measure of velocity and flow area, the discharge. One way of doing it is to use fixed structures such as flumes and weirs, where a single measurement of water level is taken and flow is calculated based on a theoretical relationship between the flow and water level. Here we are going to look at two such structures, sharp crested rectangular and v-notch weirs. A sharp crested weir is a large rectangular notch formed using a smooth vertical plate with beveled edges downstream. Such structures allow water to fall cleanly away from the weir. Consider a point upstream of the weir on a streamline going through a second point directly above the crest. Taking the elevation of the crest as our datum, let h denote the upstream depth above the crest and let z1 be the elevation of point 1 above the datum. The pressure head at point 1 will be h minus z1 and at point 2 we have what is effectively a jet at atmospheric pressure, so we take the pressure head to be zero. We can apply Bernoulli's equation along the streamline between point 1 and point 2. Assuming no energy losses, we have z1 plus h minus z1 plus u1 squared over 2g equals z2 plus 0 plus u2 squared over 2g. Rearranging this, we can see that u2 can be written as the square root of 2g times h minus z2 plus u1 squared. Let's take a closer look at what's happening above the crest and consider an elementary area of height delta z, a distance z above the crest as shown in the diagram. Discharge is area times average velocity, so the discharge through the elementary area will be b delta z times the velocity u2, giving us the expression shown here. We integrate this to find the discharge. Taking out the constants b and root 2g, we are integrating the square root of h minus z plus u1 squared over 2g between 0 and h, giving us 2 thirds b times root 2g times h plus u1 squared over 2g to the power of 3 over 2 minus u1 squared over 2g to the power of 3 over 2. This equation can be considered an ideal value of q, since we assumed no energy losses. In practice, there are frictional losses. We introduce a coefficient of discharge, cd, by which we multiply q ideal in order to take account of the frictional losses. In the case where the upstream velocity is small, this simplifies to 2 thirds times cd times the width b times root 2g times h to the power of 3 over 2. OK, let's look at an example. Here we know the width of the weir and we have a measurement for the head at a point upstream. However, we don't know the upstream velocity, so we employ an iterative method in which we first use the simplified equation, i.e. we neglect u1, and then we use the calculated discharge to estimate the upstream velocity. So, calculating q first, we have q equals 2 thirds cd b root 2g times h to the 3 over 2, giving us 0 0.066 meters cubed per second. Next, we use this value of q to estimate the upstream velocity u1, and then use the more accurate equation for q that takes account of u1. OK, so we have our estimate of discharge, 
and the continuity equation tells us that U1 is discharge divided by the upstream area, which gives us an estimate of 0.254 metres per second. Now we can make a more accurate estimate of Q using this value of U1. Here's the equation for Q that includes U1. Calculating U1 squared over 2G, we get 3.29 times 10 to the minus 3, giving us a value of Q of 0 0.0679 metres cubed per second. We can see that this is slightly higher than our first estimate. We can also see that both of these values run to 0 0.07 metres cubed per second. If we want an answer accurate to, say, two significant figures, we repeat this step to improve our estimate. This second iteration yields a discharge of 0 0.068 metres cubed per second. We could do further iterations to further improve our estimate, but we also need to make engineering judgments on what accuracy is realistic, and to think about what we have or haven't rounded. Here, I rounded everything to three significant figures, so another iteration is unlikely to improve my estimate. A good rule of thumb is to use one more significant figure in your calculations than you need in your answer. We turn now to the V-notch weir, which is also a structure with a smooth plain vertical plate and beveled edges downstream, but with a V-shaped incision through which the water can pass. We're going to do a similar analysis. So first we set up an elementary area of width B and height delta Z as before. In this case, the width of the elementary area B varies with height, but if we know the angle, then we can find B for any elevation Z. Since we have tan of a half theta equals a half B divided by Z, i.e. B equals 2Z tan theta over 2. Now, assuming that the upstream velocity is small, we can write delta Q ideal equals B delta Z times root 2 G H minus Z as for the sharp crested weir. And we know that B equals 2 Z tan theta over 2, giving us an expression for delta Q ideal. Now we integrate, and this time I've multiplied by CD before doing the integration to take account of the energy loss. Working that through, we get Q equals 8 fifteenths times CD times tan theta over 2 times root 2 G times H to the power of 5 over 2. Let's do a quick comparison of the difference in head we would get over a triangular and rectangular weir with the parameters given here for a fixed discharge. For the rectangular weir, since we're not taking account of upstream velocity, we have the equation Q equals 2 thirds CD times B times root 2G times H to the power of 3 over 2. We know Q, CD, B and of course G, so we can determine H. I'll leave the details of the rearrangement and calculation, but encourage you to do this as an exercise. The result is a head of 0.215 metres. Now, looking at the triangular weir, we have the equation Q equals 8 fifteenths CD times tan theta over 2 times root 2G times H to the power of 5 over 2. In this case, Substituting for Q, C, D, theta and G, and rearranging, yields a head of 0.335 metres. In both of these calculations, I've taken the acceleration due to gravity, G, to be 9.81 metres per second squared. Each of these two types of weir has its advantages. The sharp crested rectangular weir has a larger capacity and therefore is a better choice for high discharges and wide channels. However, it has the disadvantage that the nap shape changes with depth, and consequently CD varies with H. In contrast, for the V-notch weir, the nap retains its shape and CD varies much less. Also, for weirs with the same overall capacity, the V-notch is more accurate for low discharges, so tends to be a better choice 
for measuring highly variable flows.